So I want to an answer, ask the question first, what is baptism? And uh, I'm going to point you to text. We may not look at all the text, but I just want to give you a basic understanding of what, what is it that we're doing out here. And why is it that we're doing it? Okay? What are, what are these folks who are going to be baptized today? What are they appealing to? So what is baptism? Baptism is an immersion, dipping, submerging, plunging, dunking <laughs> into water. The person into water in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Where do we get that from? We get that from the Great Commission, right? Mm -hmm. Go into all the world and baptize, right? We're to baptize. So then, are we to baptize infants? Babies? No. Absolutely not. The proper subjects of baptism are, fo are, are men and women, or children, who actually repent and believe the gospel. Those are the proper subjects of baptism. Who is to be baptized? The person who repents and believes. That is the person that is to be baptized. And what, is the, what, what does baptism represent? What does it mean? What does it point to? What does it point the church to? And what are we declaring by our act of baptism? We're declaring first and foremost that God has done a sovereign work in our heart. We're publicly declaring, making a public announcement that God has taken out the heart of stone, and replace it with the heart of flesh. We are testifying that God has given us His Spirit. And we are testifying that that Spirit is working and transforming us into the image of Christ. That's why it is important for those who are being baptized to understand what they're acknowledging before God. And that is why it's important for those of you who are sitting here to clearly listen to and be informed of what baptism means. It's not an empty, dead ritual, but points to a reality. It points to new birth. And that new birth, or the fact that new birth is needed, indicates that man is guilty and condemned before God. He is dead in his trespasses and sins. And because of this, he must die to himself and be raised to newness of life. And that is what the dunking into the water represents. It's not that being submerged in water cleanses us from sin in and of itself. What, it, what that symbol does, what that sign does is it, it's, a, it's the believer holding on to the promises of God and acknowledging that God has done a sovereign work in their life. And as they are raised from the water, that is the symbol of the newness of life they've received from Christ. They are, they are to live a life now in fellowship among the people of God. So it's a sovereign declaration and testimony of the faithfulness of God in our lives. It's also a testimony, baptism, of our membership in the church. Now, yes, when a believer is saved, they become part of the invisible church. That is all believers in all places at any time. But then corporately, as a body, a person is baptized into the church. And they become a vital member of that church. And their baptism represents their union with that body. And their willingness and acknowledgement that they are to live with one another. Serving one another and loving one another for the work that God has done in their life. It also makes it clear to relatives who may not be believers. To employers or to anyone else. That we are going to live a life. That our life 
is to be a reflection of the power of God manifested in bearing fruit in our lives. We're declaring to men and women who don't believe that we do believe. We're holding out this testimony and saying, we're going to follow God. We're going to serve God. We've turned from our wicked ways. We've turned from worshiping idols. We've died to that past life and been raised to a new life to fellowship among the people of God. So it's a declaration of what God has done. It is an acknowledgement of the work that He is going to continue to do in our lives. It's an introduction to our membership in the church and our service to His body. And it's a public declaration for every and any person that we've died to our old way of life and we've been raised to a new life to fellowship with Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You for the sovereign work that Your Spirit accomplishes through the preaching of Your Word. And I pray now that uh, you would embolden our brothers and sisters here to uh, testify of your faithfulness in their life. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Okay. My name is Dorian Arendelle. I want to thank the Lord for leading me to Cornerstone Baptist Church, where I learned so much about the Word. I think I learned more here in the last three years I've been here than I've learned in about 15 or 20 years in other churches that I've been to. I was saved at the age of 17 because a friend invited me to a church called Pilgrim Holiness Church. And that is where I first heard the message of salvation. Before that, I thought I was a fairly decent person. I hadn't done any bad things, so I was sure I was going to heaven. But after listening to the messages that I, I heard, I realized I was no better than the murderer, the thief, and all the people I thought committed in the sins, I realized that I, just like them, was on my way to hell. And that resonated with me. I thought about it. I kept going back. Eventually, the Lord saved me. I started studying the Word, reading, trying to find out more about the walk, of the Christian walk. And for a while, I was on cloud nine because everything seemed so, I felt so good about it. But, you know, that was not the last um, the word says narrow is the way. It didn't say smooth was the way. Mm. And so I soon found that out the hard way. Um, my cloud nine turned to dark clouds after I got married. And my, we had a Christian home, I thought. And we did all the right things, praying, reading the word, and so on with the children. But my husband was leading a double life. And as a result of numerous indiscretions or, let me say the right word, adulterous relationships. Um, the, the marriage was destroyed. And I now had to face quite some problems. Before, I was devastated, of course. I went through all kinds of emotions, low self-esteem, low self-image, feelings of rejection, a number of questions which I had no answer to. What had I done that I should not have done? What had I not done that I should have done? How could I have made this better? What could I have added? What, what needed I do to do more? Couldn't find any answers. So I turned to the Lord even more than I had before. And I grew spiritually in this time. I thank the Lord for that because I was able to find in the Word um, verses of Scripture that helped me to realize I need to turn to the Lord and let Him be the center of my life rather than anyone. So I made the Lord the center of my life, along with my children, and I continued to go spiritually. Now, the emotional distress was not all that happened after the divorce. Now, whereas we were fairly comfortably financially before, now there was financial stress added to the other stresses. And even here, the Lord was my rock, and He was my strength. He was my fortress because I kept turning to him even for what I should do, for guidance, for direction, for everything in my life. And I remember even when I was, um, I had to take on another job besides teaching to make ends meet, and I would work for seven days a week, 12 hours a day, and the Lord gave me the strength to do that. He kept me in good health. I never got sick. I didn't have to leave work. And he 
helped me to make enough to keep the home together, to buy a home for myself and the children. And all in all, the Lord just led me out of all of this. He brought me on top, and I got to see how wonderful Christ was, not just for the things he was allowing me to have, but what he was doing in my life as a Christian. Because I learned to trust the Lord more than I'd ever trusted before. Sometimes I remember that song by um, Andrew Crouch who said, Through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. I learned to trust in God. I learned to depend on his word. And if I didn't have those problems, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. I wouldn't know what faith in his word could do. And so I kept trusting the Lord, kept looking to him. And I was, that is why I was so glad when I came here that I found a church that would even bring more of this to light and help me to even understand the word even more deeply than I had before. He, the Lord gave me five wonderful children for which I thank him for from that marriage. And we all, facing all odds, were able to overcome and the Lord brought us out on top. So I want to encourage anyone who is going through difficult circumstances just to keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep trusting Him, keep looking to Him for all your needs and for your spiritual growth because that is even more important than anything else. My name is Brenda Davidson. I attended a Baptist church and as a young adult I heard all about God's wrath, hell, and judgment. I was so terrified of dying and going to hell. I went forward and I asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins and to come and live in my heart. I wanted a personal relationship with him, and I wanted to spend eternity with him. I always read my Bible, I attended church faithfully, and I did many Bible studies. I truly believed that I was saved, but through God's sovereign grace, we came to Cornerstone. Since being here, I have heard through the preaching of the Word the true gospel of repentant faith in Jesus Christ how God is so holy, righteous, and just. He hates my sin, and he has a right to judge me for breaking his law. I don't want to be one of those in Matthew 7, 21, that he cast out saying, Depart from me, I never knew you. I want to do the will of his Father in heaven, and I want to obey him and read his word. I cried out to Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner deserving of your wrath and judgment. Please forgive me, Lord, for my sins of self-righteousness, my pride, my hypocrisy. Please reveal any deep sins in me so I can repent. Create in me a clean heart of Lord and renew a right spirit in me. Only God could call me to salvation through his spirit and even grant me repentance and even the faith to believe. It is all God's work. I did nothing but sin against him. I don't even deserve his mercy or his grace. I know that Jesus took my punishment on the cross, that he paid the penalty for my sin through his precious blood. I'm forever grateful. I love him because he first loved me. I want to follow Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life and obey his commandments. Today I'd like to follow him in baptism as a new creation in Christ. May God be glorified. Galatians 2.20 I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. May God be glorified. Amen. Hi, my name is Ron Davidson. Um, when I was young, I attended a small Baptist church with my family. I asked Jesus into my heart, and I believe that by the fact I, that I chose to follow Jesus, I was saved. I learned how to be a moral person, and but I remained prideful and self-serving. I believe that I was saved and it did not matter what I did from that point on. When I died, I would go to heaven with Jesus. This belief was supported by the teachings of the Easy Believism churches I attended for the 21 plus years 
prior to coming to Cornerstone. Jesus was my Savior, but not my Lord. Over the one and two months, one year and two months ago, uh, by God's grace and mercy, I was led to Cornerstone. And since hearing the true gospel, I know that I am a sinner in need of repentance. I know that I have broken all of God's commandments and that I deserve hell. In Romans 7.15, Paul wrote, For I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. And in verse 18 he wrote, For I know that, I, that nothing good dwells in me, that is, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. I know that only God can put the desire to be saved in my heart. Apostle John wrote in John 6.44, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me uh, draws him, and I will raise him up in the last day. I ask God to forgive me of all my sins and create in me a new heart. I seek evermore to know God through the readings and studying of his word. I thank Jesus for the ultimate sacrifice without which I could not be saved. I want to make him Lord over my life and obey his commandments. To God be the glory. Hello, my name is Richard uh, Kilumba. That's my actual name. Uh, people call me Richie. Uh, hey, um, I was just thinking what you said and, you know, over and over what is the best thing to say. Um, the only thing I know is that I want God to be exalted. And the very fact that I'm standing here is because of him. Uh, there's nothing I did. There's nothing that I that I could claim on. Everything was his work. And I can start with saying a little about my, my background. I was born as Catholic in Ecuador, South America. Uh, I wasn't just a professing Catholic. I was a very religious little kid, Catholic. I would have prayed. I would have prayed Virgin Mary, saints. I would have light a candle and pray. Uh, my parents left me when I was 14 years old. They moved to New York City. And me and my brother and sister pretty much grew up on our own. Um, with, but that's when I went wild. I just did everything that I, I wanted to. Everything that my desires led me to do, and that's just what I went with. Um, I moved to New York City at age of 17. That was the first time ever that uh, I hear the Word of God being preached to me by a pastor um, when I was 21. And that was in New York. Uh, I hated it because he chased me down. Uh, he always wanted to do study with me. I just didn't care about it. But one thing did call my attention. There was one night that he came. And I told him that I would meet with him, but I just didn't care, so I didn't remember. And then he was sitting there waiting for me. Uh, he had been waiting for like 40 minutes. And one thing that always came to my mind was, why is this man taking time away from his family and be waiting for me there? I didn't understand why. And, uh, but I just know that there had to be something important. Um, so then we moved. Uh, I got married with my wife, who have kids, and we moved to Florida. Um, when we moved, the pastor that was preaching to me he said that he was looking for a good church for me to go to. I just didn't know. But for me, it was like, as long as it has a cross and a looking church, it was fine. You know? <laughs> I didn't understand why, um, but it had something to do. Um, eventually, I found out. So that was my background, my beliefs. Um, when I was 21, I heard the gospel for the first time, and I just went on with my life for about 10 years. Very prideful, very uh, sinful, very arrogant. Um, I was I was hurt by all the pain that I, that I got caused by my parents when I got divorced. So I just put a wall in my heart, and I became very, very selfish. Um, but then something happened. Uh, I had a business. I lost the business. God broke me down and broke me to Matthew 5. Bless are the poor in the spirit because there is the kingdom of heaven. He broke me down. He humbled me. My family was just about to break it apart. I was going to get divorced. I lost everything I had. And the only thing I could do was go in a closet. And literally, that's what I did. I just went in a closet and I looked at the pictures of my family. And I just cried to the Lord to help me. Uh, he did. He, did. he said in Psalms that if we cry to him, he's faithful to hear our prayers, right? Uh, he did hurt me, and he delivered me from that. Uh, I went on with my life uh, after things got a little better. 
but I still didn't didn't know. I thought that God was something better than just you know helping me on this little thing here. Um, eventually, what happened was that uh, I lost a job. I didn't have a job for three years. I went to New York to look for a job, and I couldn't find it. I'm still relying on my own strength to do things. Um, I just. I just broke myself down. It was like, that's it. There's no hope. I didn't have a strength on my own. And my father, who lived there, he took me to a friend of his, of his to, um, to his office to do some paperwork with me. And he was Christian. And that's why I believe in witnessing. That's why I believe in preaching the gospel, because that's how God saved me. Mm. Um, this man came to me, and he was very bold. And he asked me a question. How are you doing? And I say, I'm doing bad. At that point, I realized that I really... I was, I was weak. I just didn't have any strength on my own. And he says, why are you like that? And he says, I have too many problems. He says, how is your relationship with the Lord? That was the second question he asked me. He says, how is your relationship with the Lord? And I said, it was great. Right? I, I used to go to church. I, I used to sing in a choir. And I served in the church for many years. So I thought it was good. He took me to the Bible, led me to Matthew 6, verse 20, um, 28. And then he took me to Matthew 6.33. Matthew uh, 6, I'm sorry, 11.28, which says, Come to me, you who are heavy laden, that I will give you rest. That was the Lord speaking to me. I was so worried about getting a job, feeding my family. And then the next verse he led me to, he said, opening and read this verse was uh, Matthew 6.33. He says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Right? It didn't sound to me like, first look for God and then he's going to provide you needs. It didn't sound to me like that. It sounded to me that that is not important. I am important. Christ is important and I should look for him first. Uh, I left that day and it was my desire to read the Bible. Amen. I didn't know why. I didn't know what happened to me. I just wanted to read the Bible. I left that day and I just kept reading the Bible for I think about a year. I didn't have a church. I didn't have brothers that can lead me to a biblical understanding of what is, you know, what, what am I here for? What, what is the point of this? I just went to Matthew and God led me to take Christ as my example. And that's when I find out that truly uh, saving faith is through repentance and faith in Christ. Um, so that's what I confess, and I wanted to um, exalt Christ. And then eventually, you know, things got a little better. God saved me. And, Still, my heart was hard until my daughter was diagnosed with cancer. And that's the day that really the Lord broke my heart. And he changed my heart of stone. And he gave me a, a heart of flesh. I can tell you, if you knew me before, I would never cry. And yet, I've been crying for the past four months, day and night. And not because of what could happen to my daughter because of my sinful nature, that I don't deserve anything. And yet, God decided to deliver me and be faithful to me without deserving. I only could claim to His promises. And His promises was that if I come to you, and I love you and I obey you, I will hear your prayers. And that's what I did. I uh, just want to read this before I finish. This is the verse that the Lord used to come for me during this affliction. He says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him. And show him my salvation. That was the promise that the Lord made to us. And he is faithful to his promises. So I stand here before uh, all of you to, to proclaim that he is the God who is living on the throne. And we should not be ashamed or share his word. Because we're not the one that saves people. It's he's the one that produces the work. And I can tell you something. He tells us, don't fear men. And don't fear men. Fear him who can destroy the body and soul. Right? So, thank you. For your time. Um, my name is Judith. Growing up, I was taught to go to church because it was the right thing to do. 
I had no fear of God, even though I was in church every Sunday. I lived my life the way I wanted. Instead of growing love for God, I grew more hate for God because I did not like how my life was turning out. I was a hypocrite because I was professing to be a Christian while still hating God. My hate for God was displayed by the way I lived my life. I was an idolater by living my life for myself. Whatever I wanted, I got, even if someone else had to get hurt. I was very selfish. I was an angry person by picking fight with anybody that looked at me the wrong way. I was very prideful. I was a liar by lying to get my ways and even lying for fun. I was a thief by stealing money not only from my family but from the government. I did not care about anybody. My life, life was all about me. Galatians 5, 19, 21 described me to the T. I was quick to pick fights, and my tongue was my sharpest weapon. I hated God, and I hated the life that he gave me and the things he made me go through. My solution to solve all my problems that my sin created was death, and I tried to take my life. I felt like I had the right to take my life away because God did not seem to care. Why live when God seems not to be in control? Around the year 2010, I got a job at Wendy's, and it was there that I met Roberta, who knew Jeff, who went to court and stuff. Roberta and I had built a good friendship outside of work, and after years of not going to church, I started going to church with her after work. The church we were going to was not a biblical church, and only produced in me a legalistic lifestyle. I thought I was more safe because I did not wear pants, I did not wear a weave, and I did not do X, Y, and Z. I basically was a Pharisee at heart because I cleansed the outside of the cup, but inside was full of greed and wickedness. Luke 11, 39. After a year um, being at Roberta Church, by God's grace, we decided to leave due to the pastor falling into sin. At the moment, Jeff was witnessing to Roberta as we were looking for a church to go to. When we finally decided to visit Cornerstone, it was there that I realized that I was never safe to begin with. I realized that the life I was living showed how I really felt about God. I hated God, and my sin had blinded me to see, from seeing that for many years. If anyone were to ask me back then if I loved God, I would say, yeah, I love God. But my life was far from it. The more I learned about God, the more I struggled to understand how could God die for someone who was so wicked. The God I knew was unloving, uninvolved, selfish, and untrustworthy. I had the wrong view of God. God used the body of Christ to start showing me who he really was. The ladies at Cornerstone were so faithful in being there for me whenever I had questions. Miss Leah, Jolie, Kavi, and so many of the other ladies took time to labor and point me to Christ. The love that these people were showing me showed me that this love can only come from God. They were so patient. Sorry. They were so patient with me, and the, the love that this, they were so patient with me, loving and faithful. The St. Victors took me in as their own. The love that this family showed me in my mind, I could not believe that they were Haitian. <laughs> because <laughs> in the Haitian church, it was the opposite. But Wes and Lily took the time out to always open their homes and answer my question. Miss Lily, who I now call mom, was by my side to rebuke me when I was in sin, to correct me when I was wrong, and to encourage me. The, the patient and love the body displayed showed me that this only had to be from God, but I still could not find myself to forsake my life for a God who I could not trust. God had to take my hard, stony heart and change it. In 2013, my dad passed away, and by God's grace, it was through that difficult time that God showed me how to trust him. For years of going to Cornerstone, I would always tell the sisters, God can't save me. Why would he save someone like me? Romans 5, 8. But God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died. It was not my good works that was going to save me. I had no good works like Romans 3, 10 said. While I hated him and screamed, crucify him, he still died for my sin. I had to understand that and believe in it. The God I had created could not save me, but only lead me to hell. The Lord I had... The Lord had to tear down my God, myself, so he could put faith in me, so I could put so I could put my faith in him. He enabled me to stop worshiping myself, stop looking to myself and to my so-called good's work. The Lord enabled me to trust him, how to find my completion in him, how to forsake myself and love him by obeying him. 
I lost my physical father, but I gained my heavenly father in heaven. The Lord used my father's death to show the need to repent while I still had air in my lungs. I started seeing my life as no longer my own, but as Revelation 4.11 say, my life is for his own glory. The Lord took a wicked sinner like me and changed me from the inside out. I am able to love other people because Christ first loved me. It was God's grace that he did not allow me to kill myself because if he did, I would be in hell today burning for eternity. It was only God's grace. There's so much more I can say about God's grace, but I can only think of the hymn, Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was lost help. But now I see twas grace that taught my heart to fear. In grace, my fears relieved. How precious did the grace appear the hour I first believed. Hi, my name is Nadia. Um, this is my testimony. I first came to Cornerstone in 2011. I liked it a lot. It was much different than churches I grew up going to, and everyone was nice and very welcoming. I noticed that the gospel was different than what I was used to hearing, learning that no one is good and Christ is our only way of salvation. It was something I'd never heard before. I didn't think much about it because I was always looked at as a goody good. I never got into trouble. Um, 2012 came and I started learning about evangelism. Um, mainly watching Ray Comfort videos. One night, um, I was watching a video of his going through the law, and I realized that I had broken all of God's commands, that I was a liar, a thief, a murderer, and an adulterer at heart. I went to him in prayer, crying and asking for forgiveness. I thought I had repented, but my heart wasn't changed. I went on living as a hypocrite, telling people that I was a Christian, but I had no fruit to show. I didn't care about spending time with the brethren. I'd go evangelizing with my sister Nina, but I didn't care about people's souls. I just wanted to be seen out there to prove that I was a Christian. I, I had an ongoing cycle of sin in my life. I loved my sin. I would think about committing my sin during church service. I basically went on deceiving myself. I knew that works couldn't save me, but I trusted in them anyways. I thought if I went in prayer, crying and asking for forgiveness, basically putting on an act for God, I was okay. I didn't. I avoided spending time with others and being around them because I was so full of pride, and I didn't want to be questioned. I thought I could have my sin and still go to heaven. I believe that God opened my eyes when a brother passed away and someone that I knew for years was disfellowshipped. I believe God used those trials to help me realize that I was going to die and sorry, that I was going to die and stand before him and had been living a hypocritical life. I realized that I was lost. And if I died in my sin, I would go to hell. But I didn't want to let go of my sin. I thought that I was unsavable. I would often think to myself, why hasn't he killed me yet? Why has he allowed me to sin against him for so long? It was a very hard time in my life. I was often afraid to sleep because I thought that I would wake up in hell. I was so sick of myself. I finally got let go of my pride and cried out to God to save me, putting my faith and trust in Christ alone for salvation. Since then, God has given me salvation and a new heart and new desires. I no longer love the things that I once did. I have a desire to serve my fellow brothers and sisters in preaching the gospel to the lost. I just thank God for saving me. For I know I don't deserve it. And I'm just humbled to be standing here in front of you all. And I just pray that my life will be forever glorifying to him. I just think of uh, 
sing a verse in one of my favorite hymns, Nothing That My Hands Can Bring, but simply to the cross I cling. So. My name is Lori Nelson. I was born a sinner, raised a moralist, and lived in false assurance of my salvation for 15 years. While growing up in a conservative and ethical home, I began to put my faith in my good works. Having learned about God and Jesus from an elementary intellectual level, I prided myself on how I thought a Christian should act. I never smoked, did drugs, or drank alcohol. I even made the choice at a very young age to save myself for my future husband. After a close family member passed away, family friend passed away, I decided that I wanted to go to heaven when I died, so I got counsel from others and I was baptized at nine years of age. As time went on and I entered into my teenage years, I was seemingly able to maintain my moral composure, but began bearing the fruits of wrath, hatred, jealousy, envy, strife, and dishonor to God, both in my heart and actions. However, the Lord in His infinite grace still allowed me to grow in the knowledge of Him, while I was still unregenerate and unconverted. I had yet to understand that I was truly lost and based my faith upon my decision in baptism as a child. In college, where many people flee from faith in Christ, the Lord began drawing me to Him through prayer, Bible reading, and fellowship with others. My prayers began to shift from a self-centered plea, using God as a genie in a bottle, to asking for conviction and for His will to be done in my life and in relationship with others. Immediately upon graduating college, I was at a crossroads where a long-term relationship and my career path that I'd worked so hard for began to fall apart. It was at this point where I began to realize that my good works could only go so far. I was empty, alone, and lost. To deal with this pain, I began to fill myself with things of this world through ungodly friendships and relationships. I couldn't reconcile the thought of, if I'm so good, then why do I feel so bad? Having some head knowledge of the Word of God, I began to understand that my righteousness was as filthy rags, that I was born a sinner, and that there was no good thing that dwelt in my flesh. I had broken God's law through my rebellious lifestyle, and I was under his condemnation, deserving of his judgment and wrath. I was dead in my transgressions against a holy God. I recognized that my, recognized that my sin put Christ on the cross. Jesus died and shed his blood as an atoning sacrifice for my sin. He died so that I could live with him in eternity. He saved my soul from hell. I began to cry out to God, and in His mercy and love, He granted me repentance from my sins and saving faith in Jesus Christ. I can no longer live in habitual patterns of sin because He regenerated my soul. God had granted me salvation. I was born again, a new creation, surrendered unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Despite growing up unchurched and eventually being under prosperity preaching and easy believism throughout college and early adulthood, the Father, still in his faithfulness, drew me to himself. I was converted in my home in 2006. Processing who I was under God's law and now who he had chosen me to be through Christ was the most crushing, humbling, and loving experience in my life. I began to hunger and thirst for righteousness, hate the things that I once loved, and began to live a life that was pleasing to God through the power of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. I am a sinner, still, who was a moralist with false assurance, but I am now born again, redeemed through the blood of Christ, and saved by grace alone through faith alone. Jesus is the Lord of my life, and I want to obey his command to be baptized. Praise the Lord. I was hoping I wouldn't lose it up here. <laughs> you know, come January, um, I'll have been here seven for seven years. I thought this would be easier. 
Come on, bro. Being here for six years, I was uh, I was just a moral guy. A moral guy who liked to spend time in his Bible. If you ask anybody who lived with me, they would tell you all the time I could spend in the Word of God. Early in the morning and early at night. And so um, earlier this year, I began to go through a number of trials. And then all the sin in my heart that was buried for years, it begins to, it begins to come to the surface. And then I realized I was a Pharisee, just a moralist, very hateful. You can ask any of the younger guys who lived with me during the last six years that I've been here, and they will tell you what I was like inside my home. It wasn't the same person that you saw here on Sunday. I was very bitter toward people. And I was very selfish and self-centered. I only ever wanted what I wanted. And I was an idolater. And I worshipped myself. And worshipped anything and everything except for the God who made me. And so I remember even early this year after I was um, realized I was unconverted. That for a while, I didn't even tell anybody. And I just I kept it all to myself. I said, I'll be okay. I'll just get saved, and I'll tell everyone afterward. And what a mistake that was. Because I got worse for weeks. And everybody could see it on my face that something was wrong. And everybody's asking me what's wrong. And all I'm doing is hiding it. I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'll be fine. And the reason why I did that is because every other thing I had ever done in my entire life was somewhat the same way. There's this long-standing pattern. I wanted to work in IT, so you just get open a bunch of books and you teach yourself. And if I want to learn algebra, I just break open a book and I teach myself. You see, everything that I had ever done in my entire life, it had been done basically in that way. I'll be fine. I'll do it on, on my own. And when it came to salvation, I tried to treat it the same exact way. I remember after weeks, and um, my mind, everything getting muddy, my conscience. I remember at my lowest point, I remember I couldn't even think straight. I mean, I'd be sitting at work doing things, or driving, and I remember I couldn't even tell if I was sinning or not. Because my mind and my conscience were so muddy, so dulled by this point. And I remember one day I had to have a talk with Pastor Rick. And I called him. And um, he says, well, I got a question for you. I want to know why you look so sad. Why you look so depressed. And remember, I, I lied to him that day. And then that same day, I remember getting home and thinking, how can I have a clear conscience just have doing this, right? And I remember I sat down and I prayed and I said, oh, everything's going to be fine. I'll get saved and then I'll tell him later that I lied to him. Presuming upon the grace of God. And you know what? I open up my Bible. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 18 verse 1. You know what it says? A man who isolates himself, he seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise counsel. That's exactly what I have been doing for a while. I remember I stood up. And I was like, how can I do this? You see, people have been chasing me down for weeks. And I had been lying to everyone. So finally, I remember that day. Remember I called Ben. I couldn't have a conversation with him that day. I, I bulleted over to Pastor Mark's house. And nobody was home. So I called Pastor Rick up. I said, I got to talk to you. I got to tell you everything that's been happening. And so I tried to bear the, that, all that burden all by myself. And all along, God chasing me. And so then after that, I remember his counsel was just really simple. He says, well, what are you going to do now? I said, well, i got to repent and believe the gospel. <laughs> I just, but I just couldn't believe how kind he was to me, you know? Because if anybody ever told me that, I would just blow him off. That's your problem. 
you see to it. And I can't believe that even after all these years, people pouring their time into me, that even after that, coming out saying I wasn't converted because I was so ashamed, they would still be willing to spend time with me and to, and to help me through it all. And so then for weeks, maybe like two months or so, I remember working through all the, all the issues. All the relationships and friendships I had destroyed for years and being wicked toward people, trying to mend those, trying to pursue the worship of God. Stop trying to read my Bible as if it's just some type of uh, entertainment to me. You ever think about that? Little kids like to play video games and put puzzles together. I like to read my Bible for three hours a day because it's fun. It's not a lifeline. I'm not seeking God. It's just entertainment to me. And I had to leave behind all this. It's my pride, my self-will, all of my idolatry. I don't know exactly when I got saved. It happened over a period of time. But what I can say is that it has happened. I'm not perfect, um, but I'm not the man that I used to be. And it was by the grace of God. Remember wait, um, waking up in the mornings, weeping because I knew I was lost? I remember one time even driving back from home and the tears in my eyes like almost crashed into the car next to me because I can't even see the lines in the road anymore. And waking, going to sleep at night thinking, if I don't wake up in the morning, I'm going to hell. And it was very sobering. But God in His kindness, somewhere along the way, He drew me to Himself. When exactly? I don't know. But I know it has happened. I'm just thankful to the Lord that through all that He sustained me. Because I knew even after figuring out I was unconverted, I said, He brought me this far. I'm not going to be like a Jew who says, Oh, you brought me all the way out to the wilderness to kill me. I said, No, He brought me this far to save me. I said, God wants to save me. I said, So with all my might, I'm going to repent of my sins. I'm going to trust Christ. And so finally, after close to seven years, I would get saved. Truth be told, I've been a Christian for like four or five months. And it's just by the grace of God. So I just want to say, just for um, the kids, um, excuse me, the parents that have kids, and you spend time teaching them, continue to do that. Because on the day that the Lord calls him, right? Lord willing, they will have the Word of God in their mind so that it can finally penetrate their hearts. That's what happened with me. I just want to thank the Lord. Thankful to everyone who bore with me during that time. That was very difficult. Don't cry, Karen. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> I just want to thank the Lord. I couldn't believe it. But by His grace, I've been saved. I've been washed in His blood. And I'm not trying to live for myself anymore. And I just genuinely, in my, my heart's desire, is just to be pleasing to Him. I don't care what it costs me. I'm gonna, um, By His grace, I'll follow Him to the day I die, even if it costs me all my life. Praise God. These testimonies are proof that Christ is risen, that He is not dead, because it's only by Christ's power that sinners are changed. Let's pray as we get ready to do the baptisms. Lord God, we worship You, and we thank You for the great works which You have done in the lives of these sinners. We thank You that You have called them to Yourself that you have granted them by your grace, repentance, and faith. We thank you that you have sealed them by your Spirit, that you have given them the guarantee of future blessings and grace that will be revealed when Christ appears. We praise you, God, for making them part of this body. We pray that you would help us as a church to love them, and to continue to teach them the gospel and train them in the ways of Christ. We pray, Lord, that Christ would be formed in them. That they would be uh, believers that faithfully serve and follow our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that you would use their gifts and talents to edify and strengthen this body. And that they would uh, be used by you to promote the unity and peace and well-being of this church. We thank you for all the things you have done. 
to save sinners. We give you all of the glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb?